Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries across the state. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time and it is um, recorded there you go. Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Central Time, <laughs> and it is recorded, excuse me, <clears throat> for anyone who um, is not available to watch it uh, during the, um, on Wednesday mornings. Both the live show um, and the archive are available, and I'll actually, let's see, here, yeah. Um, there we go. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows um, we have on. Uh, the Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in the state, for all types, <coughs> excuse me, for all types of libraries in the state. So we will have things for academic libraries, public libraries, <coughs> K-12 schools, universities, um, museums, uh, correctional facilities, anything and everything you'll find on our show here. Uh, <clears throat> we do record the show every week and it is posted here on our Encompass Live website. Here's our upcoming shows and our archives here. I'll show you all about that at the end of today's show. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products. Uh, it's pretty much all across the board, just anything that is library related. Uh, we sometimes have guest speakers come on the show too from outside of Nebraska or outside the Library Commission, but we also have Library Commission staff that do presentations and that's what we have today. We have me. <laughs> uh, this morning uh, we are going to talk about the 2019 Public Library Accreditation Process um, and this is for Nebraska Public Libraries, the accreditation program we have here in the state of Nebraska. Now I know everyone who's uh, with us this morning is here from Nebraska, but for anyone who watches on the archive, just to let you know, this is our Nebraska state program. There are some other states in the country that also do um, have accreditation programs and or certification programs for their library um, staff. Uh, not every state has one, um, but this is the one that we have here going in Nebraska. It is a annual process for me <laughs> uh, to uh, see who is coming up for being credited. Uh, for libraries, it is a three-year process. So every three years, our libraries have to do it. So uh, we're just going to jump right into what is accreditation, what it's all about, what you guys need to know. Uh, I will let you know we did. Do, I did do longer three-hour workshops of this earlier in this in the spring this year around the state and online. Uh, but this one here for today is a much uh, a condensed version of it, just to get you the basics and important things that you need to know and what's happening um, specifically with this year, 2019. So uh, public credit library accreditation um, will open up on July 1st, which is actually next Monday. Uh, next Monday, all libraries in the state who are up for reaccreditation, they've reached three years since the last time they were accredited, will receive an email from me um, inviting them to uh, try to become um, reaccredited. Uh, in addition, any libraries out there who have never been accredited but have submitted the public library survey, the annual survey of statistics that we have online, um, and a supplemental survey that we do here in Nebraska will also be invited to become accredited for the first time. Uh, last year, for 2018, we actually had six new libraries uh, become accredited for Nebraska, so that was awesome, new, new libraries joining in and, and with the program. So next Monday, you will receive an email if you're up for accreditation. Uh, there is an application form that you will go online to uh, fill out, and I'll show you that um, in a little bit here. And there is a community needs response plan, a strategic plan is what it used to be called, a plan about what you're going to be doing over the next three years that you also need to submit. Uh, those two things, the application form and the plan, are due by October 1st. Of, the, of this year. So as of July 1st, the application form goes live. You have till October 1st to submit it to me. And then by the end of the year, by the end of December of this year, you will know from me whether or not you are reaccredited and at what level. 
Um, accreditation is something, you know, why would a library want to be accredited is something that I hear a lot. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's pretty com it can be a complex uh, program uh, process to go through. You only have to go through it with me every three years. But um, accreditation is a way of setting standards for libraries in the state, something for um, a library to reach for if you are not, um, haven't met some of the criteria. Uh, it shows that your um, community is a measure of community pride of the library services that you offer to your citizens, that you are you know, comparing yourselves to other libraries or at least looking at what you're doing out there and showing that we have gone through the process of meeting these criteria and um, these benchmarks and seeing what other libraries similar to us are doing and seeing how we compare to them. Are we as good as doing as well as they are? Do we need to improve in certain areas? Um, and it's a measure of the quality of the community's library services. So, um, it, it, it can, some some people do question, you know, why do we go through all of this? And it's just a pride thing. Um, you do get a certificate from us, an actual certificate that you can frame, uh, a window sticker to put on on your win, on your library's window. We also have now online um, badges, things you can post on your website around anything that you have that you hand out that you can say we are a Nebraska Public Library, an accredited library. Um, there are also some some of the advantages of being accredited has to do with um, money. Uh, there are certain things that they, uh, certain uh, monetary things that you cannot get unless you are accredited. Uh, for example, state aid to public libraries. This is money every year that we have that we can um, give out to libraries, uh, and it's depend you know it's divided up amongst the libraries who submit our survey and who are accredited in the state. You, if you're not accredited, you can't receive state aid from us at the Library Commission. In 2019, the payment was um, $565, and I can actually look here too to see. I know we just recently did a blog post about state aid, so let's see here. Yeah. The, the letters, the um, state aid usually goes out in the spring. There we go. Uh, and then you can look on our website to see um, what the distribution was. So the base price, $565 per library, and then it depends on your population if you get more. Um, but then in addition to that, if you are accredited at a certain level, you get an extra um, $200 for being bronze, $400 for being the higher level. So you get even more um, depending on what level that you um, have reached in our accreditation program. So there's a the state aid monies that you can receive, so extra funding for you to do whatever you like with at your library. Um, you're also eligible to apply for the grants that we have here at the Library Commission. On our website here, we have, um, there's lots of different grants and funding opportunities, but specifically Library Commission grants that we have. Um, you need to be an accredited public library to apply for these. So continuing education and training grants, that would be for atten attending workshops or uh, conferences or, or bringing some, um, you going somewhere outside the state or bringing someone to your library, to your organization to do training for you. That's continuing education. Uh, internship grants, if you want to have an intern at your library uh, to work for a summer project or any time, you, um, you can get a grant for that. Library improvement grants, we didn't do those this year. We, um, we, um, we did the internship grants, but that would be for uh, physical things in your library, up to upgrading them, um, a system or a program, um, of, you know, the actual building itself. Um, and then youth grants for excellence, for children and teen services. Um, you can get funding for programs or equipment or furniture or things that you need in here specifically for your teen and you and um, youth programs. So all of these grants that we offer through the Library Commission, you do need to be accredited to even uh, apply for. Um, in addition, there are some other funding sources that we have here that are have also decided to join in with the um, accreditation as uh, being a requirement. There are the Community Development Block Grants. These are the ones that are through the Nebraska's uh, Department of Ec Economic Development. And specifically, if you look through these, there's lots of different types of grants you can see here on different things. But under Public Works category, libraries are mentioned there. So you can apply to a grant for a grant um, here at the Department of Economic Development, but you do need to be an accredited public library to apply for that. 
Uh, Creates Bennett donor advised fund grants these as well. Um, there's actually these are grants that are specifically for the smallest libraries that we have. Well, pop, you have to have a population of 3,000 or less. Uh, there are actually three different grants in this program. And one of them is actually one of these grants you can you apply for if you're not accredited. They actually have a grant to help you become accredited if you're not yet. So it will um, provide funding for anything you might need to spend money on. If you need to pay salary, um, you know, your staff need to go um, eat, you know, to attend a workshop I'm doing or to run a program or something that's related to accreditation and you need someone else to work at the library, you can pay the salary of that person. If you need to update any, any programs or uh, purchase new materials or get an online catalog set up or something like that, anything like that you can see listed here anything that will get you uh, accreditation being able to be accredited you can get a grant for but after that there are two other grants they have that you have to already be accredited through us the enhancement grants this is for um, uh, programs and services um, that you might do and then the facilities grant which is for the building so if you need to do an update of something uh, build a new building or you know rehab some building do some renovation in a building and the facilities grant would be for that so those two grants you do need to be accredited for so that's another one and then the last one we have on here is the USDA community facilities grants this is also one that public libraries are eligible for and you can see there you go educational services such as museums pri libraries or private schools so libraries are listed in there um, these are also if you were doing this as a library if your time is doing this on the behalf of the library a library would need to be accredited to receive this funding as well so there's lots of um, reasons why you would definitely want to either become accredited or keep up your accreditation. I know some some um, some municipalities, some cities have are unsure about this sometimes when the reaccreditation comes up. Why do we do it? Uh, you know, sometimes your your mayor or your city um, uh, administrator or your city council may be unsure about why are you going through all this work to do this. Well, these are the kind of things that you can tell them. Um, this is good for the um, the library. The, you know, there's all these monies that is available to us if we maintain our accreditation or become accredited. If you lose your accreditation, if you don't um, reaccredit it, you will not get your state aid anymore. You won't be eligible to apply for all of these grants. Um, and then there's, of course, just the showing that you are, you know, keeping up with what's going on in the library world and keeping your library on top of things and showing that by becoming accredited. So if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, please do type into your questions section. I've got that over here. So you can uh, let me know if you want to know about anything more. Um, I mentioned that I had done workshops before. There is a recording here of the full um, in-depth workshop if you do want to go ahead and watch that at some time in a, in a longer format. Um, but today we're going to do a much more, uh, like I said, a, a quicker overview of everything. All right. So as I said, the schedule starts in July. Um, everything will be due in October and then you'll know by December 31st if you are accredited. In order to become accredited, as I said, you have to have submitted our public library survey, um, which is usually due in February. So for this year, you should have already done that. Um, that was due. That's our uh, the federal survey that we do. Um, but we also have a supplemental survey that we do just here um, for the Library Commission. A few extra questions that we wanted to ask of libraries that are not on the main public library survey. So you'd have to submit both of those to us um, online um, using the online system that we have. Uh, Bibliostat is the name of the system, Bibliostat Collect, <coughs> for those of you who have ever done that. Uh, to make things convenient for you, you have a specific password that you use to log into your Bibliostat Collect um, account to submit your uh, statistics. You use that same password to log into your accreditation application form, um, which is also an online form. So you don't have to think, you know, have a new, a different password to try and remember or keep track of. Uh, once you've submitted both of those things, then you become and you are invited to either re-accredit if you've already been accredited or to become accredited. Uh, there are, and I'll go into the minimum qualifications and the other things in um, a bit here. There are three levels of accreditation, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. 
And yes, this is actually related to the Olympics. You uh, might think it was just random. Um, during the, when they were um, reevaluating, they, they revamped the accreditation program in uh, 20, between 2011 and 2013. 2013, this new format came out. And at the time they were doing it, the Olympics were going on. And someone did jokingly say, you know, what are we gonna name the new levels for this new program? And jokingly said, oh, gold, silver, and bronze, wouldn't that be? you know, funny. And they thought it was a great idea. So it is. <laughs> um, and the way the accreditation works, it is on earning points. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things in the application form, and we'll look at a live version of the form um, in just a second here. And you can earn points for having certain things, for um, how much money you um, have in your budget, for programming that you offer, for doing continuing education, um, policies, a whole bunch of things. And uh, as you earn these points, you can get up to the minimum bronze and more points, silver and gold. Um, there isn't anything above gold. You can earn more than 250 points. You see it says you can earn 275, but we don't have any sort of like, you know, gold plus or platinum level. Um, there's just the three levels, bronze, sil three levels, bronze, silver and gold. Um, previously, the accreditation program worked in a different way, if anyone here maybe had done it in a previous incarnation, where for each level, they were called different things there, you had to meet all the criteria to meet the lowest level. And then you can start working on the second level, and you'd have to meet all those criteria in the second before you can try, earn that one, and then on to the third. Um, that was very restrictive, they discovered, to some libraries who mainly were stronger in certain areas, but not in others. Um, every library is different. Every library has different things they need to focus on in their town and in their community. So uh, comparing them all across the board to having to do all the same exact things was just not really fair and it didn't really accurately represent the great things that libraries are doing. So this new form of accreditation, this new um, way of doing it with the guidelines that you can just earn points for what you're good at. You might not earn points in one area that someone other library will, but you'll earn them on doing something else. In the end, um, each library will become accredited for what they do best. Um, and for what you know is, is important in their community. So it's much more uh, personal, I think, in that this really reflects what's going on in your community and what you are needing to um, provide to them. All right, let's we'll talk about that, all right. Now, um, there are 12 minimum qualifications that you have to meet to become accredited. So these are the basics before you can even get into the form. Um, and you can see here it says that the process will be in July 1st. So right now, today, if you tried to go into this form, it's not going to let anybody at you in uh, because it doesn't go live till next Monday. But we'll be able to see a demo version of this in just a second here. So in order to even apply at all to be accredited or reaccredited, these are the 12 basic things that you have to, criteria you have to meet. Um, a legally established library under state statutes, uh, chapter 51 of the Nebraska state statutes explains how to establish a library. That you comply with Nebraska library laws and the other local or federal laws that might affect any operations you have at the library. Uh, so this would be like Open Meetings Act would be a, a one that you'd have to be in. Um, following. You have a library board of some sort, whether it's a governing one or an advisory board, either one of those, um, you have to have a library board. The board is certified by the Nebraska Library Commission and the director is certified by the Nebraska Library Commission. So these are two other programs that we have here and I am going to, there we go, go over here to talk about those now while we're talking about them and the qualifications. You'll notice that we have here on our menu in on the Library Commission's website, accreditation and certification are grouped together. That is because board and librarian certification feeds into library accreditation. Um, you don't have to do, be accredited if you've done the certification of your board or, or, or your library staff, um, but it is required for the accreditation. For board certification, we have information here about that. Um, public library boards need to, um, over a three-year period, have uh, done a total of 20 hours of CE um, from the last time they were certified. And this is the board as a whole, not each person. So if you have five people on your library board, um, that would be um, four hours for each person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
so and if all the board sits together like all five of your of your board members sit together during a board me meeting and watch a webinar like one of our encompass live webinars or something for an hour <clears throat> they have even though they're all sitting together they've earned five ce credits by all sitting there together so it's really easy for boards to earn their 20 hours over the three um year period um, we have a list here of things you can earn ce doing as a library board uh, webinars online or in person um, we've also paid uh, for access for all the Nebraska library staff for United for Libraries, which is the um, ALA's group for boards and trustees and friends and foundations. Um, Trustee Academy. These are special courses that are available online and you can see here by what they're, they are. They're specifically geared toward doing your job as a library board member. So we've paid for everyone in the state who is a library employee um, and, or board member or staff to have access to these um, longer workshops and these short takes. There's some shorter ones too that you can watch. So um, look through all of these and you'll definitely be able to find things that you can uh, earn credit for. There is a, you can look up your board's status to see if your board is certified and when they expire next. Uh, if you click on your library's name here, it will tell you for the current three-year period what uh, we've already gotten our records as um, CEs submitted, um, what your current ones are and how many more you need, by what date, and then who we have listed as your current board members. So you can always double check here and keep track of what your board is doing. For the library director, the other sort of requirement was that the library director needs to be certified through our public librarian certification program. This is a more intense program, of course, for the library staff. Um, there are different levels of certification depending on the population of your community. Um, if you have completed your own higher education courses in different levels, you can get credit. If not, we have our basic skills classes that you can take. We know not everybody um, who's working at our libraries or working as director in libraries has gone to um, graduate school or for any of these degrees here, and that's fine. That's why we have our basic skills programs where we have those, uh, can teach you those things. Uh, uh, librarians, library directors have to do 45 CE credits in a three-year period. So uh, these basic skills classes count towards that. Other things that you do count towards that as well. Um, we have information on our website all about our basic skills classes. And you have to, for both the librarian certification and the board certification, you do need to submit a form to us letting us know you're going to do this. Um, you don't just start taking classes and then we know. You do need to let us know that you're doing this not just for your own education, but why you're attending these things, but for the purpose of certification. So you, as a library director, would need to submit a certification for yourself or an application, and your board would need to submit an application letting us know, okay, now we're working towards our certification. Please keep track of all of our uh, board members or CE for that purpose. Uh, what kind of things can you um, get CE for? Um, very similar for, sure for the librarian, webinars, workshops, courses, um, lectures, attending conferences, uh, academic courses. You can actually take academic courses online. Uh, something that some people don't think about, teaching yourself. If you present at a conference, if you present a workshop, if you teach, if you are a presenter here on my Encompass Live show, if you come here to talk about something your library is doing, you can earn CE for doing that as well. So not just for you learning, but for you teaching other library staff. There are report um, forms that you can use to submit your CE records, both for the, this is the one for the uh, staff and the library director. There's one separate one for boards on the board page. Uh, you can also look up your CE record, there it is, to see where you're at. Now this, I can't show you one of these, but this is where you'd have a, a password and you can look it up if you need to, but you'll be able to check your own record here to see what we know that you submitted and how many hours you might still need. So your board certification and your library certification um, feed into the library accreditation. The, where is that one here? The board has to be certified. Um, the three-year period for the board, for your library director, and for your accreditation will not necessarily be all at the same time. Um, it'll depend on when each of these was, was started up, and that's fine. As long as your board is working currently certified from the last time and working towards the next one, you're good. As long as your director is currently certified, you may be working towards your next one, but as long as you're currently all good, um, that, that counts for, the, for this. 
Um, in addition, you need to, as going back to these 12 uh, qualifications, receive local funding from your city, village, township, or county, so it can't just be a donations type library. Uh, yet, as I said, you have to do the public library survey and the supplemental survey. You have paid library staff during all your regular hours. So this is, uh, you can't have a volunteer run library either. So now sometimes you may need to have a volunteer to come in and cover for you because you are going to a workshop or doing something or whatever, and that's fine, you know, on the fly type things. But as far as your regular schedule, you need to have paid staff. The director has to have an email address, which you use and check regularly. That is how we will be contacting you. You make all your services available without charge. This is actually part in the uh, state statutes as well. So your basic services, uh, lending materials, coming in and using the materials in your library, access to the internet at no charge as well as a separate fee um, thing here. Now there are things that you can charge for. This isn't saying everything has to be free. You charge people for piece per paper that they print out. You charge fees to attend certain pro programs, extra programs, materials for crafts and whatnot. That's okay. It's just these basic services and your internet access that needs to be free. And then your last of the 12 basic is doing an annual report to whoever your governing body is. Now, this may be just sending them something once a year. It may be presenting something to them in person, however you do that. Um, now you see, after you've got those 12, you can apply for accreditation. Now if I do this now, it's gonna say, oh, it's gonna ask for a username and password. I've already logged into one over here. So this is the user ID and password. Like I said, it's the same one you use for Bibliostat for do your, doing your statistics. So if you already have that and know that, you just use that. Otherwise, we do have a lookup here for you. Uh, but I've logged into one over here already. Um, what we're going to use as a demo so you can see uh, Wayne Public Libraries. Now we do have on the main accreditation web page that I'll go back to here, if you scroll down a bit, there's a link to the application that I'm showing you there, but there is a preview application as well. So if uh, accreditation is not live yet, or if you just don't want to go into yours right now, you just want to see what it looks like, we do have a static preview application, where it has all the same questions, but you just can't click on it and none of it's interactive or anything. So you do have that, um, you can, hold on to that, print it out, use it for uh, you know, just seeing ahead of time what you might need to answer. But here I want to show you one that's actually interactive. Uh, on the accreditation application, um, application form, there's going to be the things that are data that's already been entered in your public library survey. You do not have to re-answer or re-enter any of that information. We already automatically pull that into the form for you. And you can see here, here's some with the green checks showing that uh, they've answered those on the supplemental survey. Um, if they didn't answer it or they said no or they don't meet the criteria of their peers, it would be a red X. There's one, there we go, a red X. So you can see the difference. This is not anything you can change here on the application form itself. This is already pre-filled in, in for you based on your public library survey that you submitted. All the other questions on here is the ones where then you can start earning your points towards the things that you specifically do in your library. Now, some of these uh, questions also, you are compared to your peers. So here's the peers for Wayne. These are um, libraries who are within 15% uh, of your legal service area, below and above. Uh, some of libraries will have more um, that they're compared to, some will have fewer, depends on how many are available that are really close to you. Um, you can see here also for Wayne, because of their size, we actually had to pull in some from Iowa. Um, there weren't enough libraries we felt in Nebraska to make a really valid comparison, so we bring in sometimes. All this public library uh, survey data is free and um, open public for anyone to look at. So we just look at the neighboring states, so similar types of libraries in the Midwest, similar size, to use as a comparison. Those um, peers will also be automatically compared to you, and here's one here, the local income. Um, what we looked at, what you submitted, what your peer average is, and the peer median. And so this is from those libraries that are listed up top. As long as you meet the average or the median, you get the points for that particular item. Um, doesn't have to be both, just one or the other. 
Uh, as you're going through the application form, up here there's a running total that'll keep track of how many points you've earned. So you can see, and it floats along with us. So for the basics of first logging in here, we've got 86 points. But you'll see if we start checking boxes, uh, oh, oh, got to do the first one. All right, the points will start going up. So you can add or delete, and you'll just see a running total of where you are in your um, uh, answering your questions. There is also help built into the application form as you're going through it. In some places, there'll be a little question mark that you can click on, and a pop-up will come up with um, information about that specific air, um, question that links out to useful things that we have out there. This is the full help for the entire application, so you can scroll through all of this if you want to, but it will automatically default to popping you into where that answer to that particular question on the application form is. So um, as you're going through this form, it'll keep track of your points. At the very bottom, I'm going to scroll all the way down here quickly. There is a, um, you can submit the application when you're totally done, or you can save and go back and pick it up later. You do not have to do this entire thing all in one sitting and submit it. If you get interrupted or you need to look something up or you're just you're getting started with it, you can save and resume. When you come back, it will have saved all of the answers you have checked and you'll be, to pick up, you'll be able to pick up where you left off and continue um, checking your boxes. When you're completely done, that's when you can submit the application, which will then go to me. Now this submit, um, that's your final submission to me. It's not in stone, as in you can never change anything. If you made a mistake or you discover something needs to be changed or fixed, we can tweak things in the background here. So you just let me know um, if something was wrong and you need to work on that. And we can always um, do that. So the sections here, I'm just going to go briefly through them, not going to go through every single question. You got the first section here on governance and planning. Um, the first thing is meeting the 12 minimum qualifications that automatically is checked for you. The second thing is the other thing that is required for you to have is a community needs response plan, which we're gonna um, I'm gonna talk about in just a little bit here. This is a plan about what you're gonna be doing at your library over the next three years. Uh, what kind of policies do you have? Uh, do you have a friends group or a foundation? This is automatically filled in from your survey questions. So that's some basic um, information about your library. We'll do some policies we have here, sure. Um, resources you have at your library, and they are, here we are comparing to your peers, your local income, your facilities, uh, your hours, um, your staff. Now here you can see this is where we were talking about the library director has to be accredited, certified, and you can see here it's based on uh, population, um, and this director is certified. In addition, you can earn more points if some of your own of your staff are also certified. The director is required to be, but if um, some of your staff are certified as well, you can earn um, that many extra points for them. And you see they did sub, um, answer on their survey that they did have some other staff, and so they earned points towards that. Um, here I mentioned here's one where they did not meet the peer or median average for um, uh, full-time employees compared to their peers. Uh, then you've got a technology section. Do you have an ILS? Is it online? How's your broadband? How are your computers? Then the collection. Are you weeding? Are, um, what are your expenditures there? How do you, do you use online websites? The basic things are your collection. And then the services you offer. Outreach programs, um, attendance at your programs, accessing different databases, uh, making them available, online databases available that we have here through the Library Commission, like income, or Nebraska, Nebraska Access, um, or other databases you have. Do you have Wi-Fi? Uh, cooperating with other organizations. Do you attend other board meetings of your city council, village, um, up to the county level? Is the county providing you with funds, or is that something you want to work with? Are your staff participating in things like Kiwanis or Rotary um, that, and then, you know, kind of selling the library to them as, as a resource? Having a teen advisory board. Um, attending advocacy type of thing, type uh, events. So NLA, Nebraska Library Association, does an annual advocacy day here in Lincoln. Do your staff attend here? Or do you participate in national efforts that ALA does print potentially? Um, and then do you have any of our group purchases that you participate in? And the last section here is about, and the form is about communications. How are you reaching out to your community about what's going on in your library? Um, on your library website, do you have your policies posted, your mission statement? Do you have Facebook, Twitter, um, 
Instagram, whatever social media type uh, program out there that you're using, list them here. Um, this is some, these are things that I will look at. If you tell me something's on your website or that you're using Facebook or Twitter, I will go and search out and find your pages and see if it is actually there to make sure you're, you know, when you're answering these questions. Um, but there are reasons, you don't just uh, promote things online. Non-internet PR is important as well. Do you, you know, peep, some people still, many people, look at the newspaper, uh, look at flyers in your local businesses. You have a community newspaper or community newsletter. Are you using non-internet related uh, uh, promotion? Do you have exhibits in your library? Do you report to the village board? Um, do you communicate with other business leaders? So all these communications get in the library out there. So you can see on each, all of these different things, it'll tell you how many points each one is worth. And as you keep checking them, you um, earn those points. Uh, if you uncheck something, you, you don't get those points. When you're totally done, double check. This can this is pulled from your uh, survey, but if you have a different director now, between when you did your survey in February, maybe, and when you're doing this, you can always change that for us before you actually submit. Now, I'm not going to submit this or anything for Wayne because I don't want to mess with their accreditation. Um, but once you submit it, you'll get a confirmation, and then I'll receive the uh, notification that you did the form as well. Any questions about the, the application form? That was just a brief overview of it. As I said, you can look more closely at some of those questions when you're actually doing it. All right, so your application form is the one thing you have to submit to me. And the other thing that is very important, it's kind of the other 50% of your grade, is this community needs response plan. And as you saw here, this must be checked. You have to submit one of these to me. Um, this does not have to be approved by me before you check this box. You see it says submitted. It used to say approved. I changed that because it was a bit confusing. Um, and we'll go into the details a little bit of that plan now. When you submit your application form and your plan, both to me, I then look at them together. I see what you've mentioned in your plan, what you've mentioned, we've checked in boxes, you've checked in your application form, making sure they match up. Uh, making sure you didn't forget to mention something in your plan that you checked in the box or you forgot to check a box that you mentioned that something you were doing in your plan. Um, I use them together to then evaluate your uh, accreditation um, application to us and decide whether to approve it. Um, let's see. So the community needs response plan. We have a whole separate page for that. This is an actual separate document that you will submit to me, uh, Word document, PDF, however you want to send it to me. You send it to me in the mail. You can email it to me, uh, scan, fax it, whatever works for you. Um, this is something that they added to the accreditation process. Rather than just saying, are you doing all these things? Check off all these boxes. Let's get you thinking about working in your community. What is going on in your community and responding to those community needs? Um, previously, this was called a strategic plan. So if you did this three years ago, you probably have a previous one um, in your file somewhere that's called your library's strategic plan. Um, and that's fine. You can use that previous plan to base your new one on. Uh, all we, I did with this was changing the name of it, the format of the plan, the contents, what you need to have in your, in your community needs response plan is still the same as it was for the strategic plan. So, but uh, strategic planning was confusing to people. Uh, many cities have a strategic plan or your library might have a huge strategic plan for the library. And that has a lot of different things about everything you're going to do throughout the next, you know, some usually that's a five year plan type thing. This is a little different. This is something specific to just one part of what your library is doing, looking at the community, seeing what's going on out there, seeing what the library can do in response to the needs, what's happening. Is there some, some service we should be providing? Is there something we can help facilitate? Um, it's, so it's, it's more of a, not a full on strategic plan. So we changed the name of it that it's a community needs response plan. There are some basic parts that need to be in the plan that we list here, but, and we do have, a um, this is a link to the same recording about this, but if you scroll down past here, um, we've got templates and guides, worksheets to help you create your plan. So you don't have to go in with a blank piece of paper and figure out how do I write up all these things? How do I write up a community profile and an assessment of community needs and analyze them and do all this? All you need to do is go down here to our worksheets and use each one of these to help you create each of those parts 
of your plan. We do also have examples of other libraries' plans here. Um, and let's see, let's bring up one. I think Gothenburg's is, yeah. Here's a new one from Gothenburg, which is their community needs response plan. So good for 2018 to 2023. And you see here, they have a table of contents. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they get into who the planning members are. So there's just a, a bit longer one, but that's not a requirement. You can have a much shorter one. Um, let's see, Morals has a little cover page here. Um, and they go just they don't have a table of contents. That's okay. They just go right into talking about what they were doing on it. Uh, I think Ponka is a good one here. They don't even have a cover page or a table of contents. They just go right into it, and that's fine. Um, however you want to format yours and have it look, it doesn't matter. It's what's in there is what matters. But these are good examples of plans that have answered all the questions, have um, put all of these parts into their plan. So the different parts that you do need, a mission statement. You probably already have one of these. Uh, what is your library's mission statement, vision statement, reason for being? Just put that in there. Community profile. This is demographic data about your community. Um, down here in the help guides here, we have a link to the American Fact Finder. This is US Census data where you can look up your community and find out all the information about what's going on in your community. They are starting in July which is just next month, going to be switching to a new website for this called data.census.gov. Um, hopefully it will go live um, and work. It's, it's out there now that you can look at it, um, but you can get, um, so let's look at one of the communities we have here. Let's see if we can look up. Just because it's at the top of my list, Bellevue. There we go. Bellevue City, Sarpy County, Nebraska. I'm only using you as an example because you're first time I <laughs> chase in list. So, and it'll take some time. This is a, a, it's got some nice tables and things here. And you can see here, this has got its source, the 2017 American Community Survey. And this is important. When you're looking at your demographic data here, uh, as you know, I hope everybody knows, next year is our census. Our 10 year census is happening. So the last time the full census was done was 10 years ago. That data is in here. Um, you can find you know, the official census data, but for your purposes of doing this community needs response planning and responding to what's happening in your community, you want to use anything that comes from the community survey. You can see here, they do do in between censuses, they still collect data. And that's what this American Community Survey is all about. So you're gonna want um, for your plan to me, I don't wanna see something that says, according to the 2010 census, because that's old information. You don't want to base what you're doing on 10 year old information either, especially when we know there's more up to date info. So first thing, definitely make sure in your plan that it refers to whatever is a re most recent of the community needs, um, <coughs> American community survey. <coughs> Here they have the 2017, I believe supposedly when they go live in July, next month, they're supposed to have this updated to the 2018 one. We'll see. I don't, either one is fine with me. <laughs> 2017 that's out there now or 2018 if they do get it up before you start working on your plan. As long as it's not the old 2010 information or whatever you used the last time you wrote your plan. Um, your three-year-old plan um, would have been done, um, done in 2016 and maybe used 2015 or 14 data. That's still too old because we've got more current info right here. So when you go into here looking for your data, look for the tw whatever the most recent community American Community Survey data is. Um, and you can look at different tables of population. Um, in here, uh, they just have, you're just gonna have to kind of play around here and look at, they've got maps of some of the data. So if you wanna look at it mapped out, you can see it there. It's, it's, it's pretty in-depth and has some really good information. Here you can view all the different tables that might be available to, to you, age and sex, geographic mobility, commuting, um, if we load more. So you can see you can get a lot of detail. Now, not all of this education, uh, households, 
poverty status. So not everything in here, income, is what you're going to need for your for your data for me. Um, you just go through it and find the ones that you think may be most useful. We do have a worksheet here that we um, created to help you. Uh, on the other screen there. Enter in some of the data. So you can use this as just a guide for the kind of things you might look for in there that might be useful to you to decide what's going on in my community to find out how things are going. We also have one that's filled in with the state figures. So if you wanted to compare yourself to the state as a whole. Something else to think about when you're looking at the census data is do you serve not just your community, but other nearby communities or the county? And you uh, might want to do a search here on Sarpy County and get sort of the county data if you do know that you serve, you're actually a county library or serving the county. Or is there a nearby city who doesn't have a library and you know their people come, their citizens um, come to your library? Look up their data too. So not just looking in here for your specific city, but who are your patrons? Who are you serving? And finding out what's going on in their areas. Uh, after you got that data, you need to do an assessment of community needs, figuring out what's happening in your in your area. And basically, this is doing some sort of a survey or a focus group or interviewing people or um, any way of just finding out what's going on in the community. Uh, you can do this yourself or if something's been done recently by your city uh, or your municipality in the last five years or so, you can use data that's already out there. So this is just researching and um, maybe creating a survey and having people answering it, not just about the library. And this is where we're talking about the community. And this is where a lot of people kind of uh, get confused. You know, you, you, we're the library, so we should want to be asking people about what they want the library to do and what's happening at the library. <clears throat> and that is true, but for our purposes of this community needs plan, we want you to be asking your community members, what's going on in our town? Not just at the library, what's going on out there? What is um, something that the most thing that's most upsetting you or that needs addressing? Uh, or we we need to uh, to work on. Um, so this is not going to be necessarily something that the libraries can even do anything about sometimes, and that's okay. Uh, people are going to start mentioning all sorts of things. The streets need repairing. Uh, the dog park is never cleaned up. Uh, we need a splash pond, pond, um, pad, whatever it is. But you're just gathering an ideas of what's going on in the community. Somewhere in there, something will pop up that'll be something the library can be related to or um, do something with or about. But the goal is um, what's important here. There's all these different ways you can do it with specific interviews and surveys and bringing in a group and a focus group, but it doesn't matter, whatever works for you. These are just examples. We do also have sample questions that you can ask. So you can see here leading questions. When you come to them as the library saying, I wanna ask you some questions about what you want, they're gonna start saying, well, I want the library to do this. And that's fine. Let them get that out of the system, but then have them start answering these kind of questions. What's going on in our community that you want to know, work on? After you've done that, <clears throat> then you're going to do a SWOT analysis. This is your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is um, just kind of visualizing a little better what we're good at, what we can do, and what we have trouble with. And we have specific, and normally this is done for your organization as a whole. What are the, you know, our businesses, strengths, weaknesses, and our opportunities and threats to us. So what we're asking you to do in this plan, though, is for strengths and weaknesses, look internally at the library only. For external, for opportunities and threats, looks externally outside the library. Any of the opportunities and threats that you mentioned in your plan cannot have anything to do with the library. They might be things you think the library can fix, and that's fine but don't mention them when you do this part of your plan. You can see here, I've got some examples of that. What's going on in the economy in town? Um, is there a new business? Is some factory closed down? Is there a new group of immigrants have shown up in town and you need to now help them? Um, is there, you know, have we suddenly gotten, you know, really good um, internet in town or is the internet really bad? Um, and, you know, that's fine, just stop there. You know the library can be the internet, this, the, the answer to that problem, problem and that's fine but don't mention that when you're doing this section of your plan. So internal environment is about the library. 
external opportunities and threats is going to be about the community itself. Um, and you can see here things here in the library is your typical things. What, how good are you, is your staff, or your building? Do you have the right technology? How's the funding? What are you really good at? And what are you, you know, you, know, you need to work on? So just try and keep those two things separately. Library, not library. Uh, once we've gathered all this information, what's going on in our community? Uh, what is the actual demographics? What are we good at? What does this community need? You developed um, goals. What um, what are we going to do? When are we going to do it? Uh, these are some helps. Um, so this is the, the final um, goal of this plan is coming up with something concrete, a few things that the library can do over the next three years. Now that's the thing, it's talking between now and the next time you're up for accreditation. Not immediately and everything needs to be done now. Um, I think sometimes this has scared some people of like, we can't institute three new programs you know, right now, we're, we're too, too busy, and no, no, that's not what we're talking about. Um, it's something that you'll do this year, or maybe next year, uh, or um, the year after that, and you can have that as being part of your specific goal. In 2021, the, you know, the library will institute a book delivery program to the um, local daycare, because they need books there, so it'll be a lending program to the daycare, and that's something you're going to do in a couple of years because you've learned from your demographics. There's a lot of young families in town. Um, the daycare doesn't seem to have any books that keep coming to you for stuff. Let's do an outreach to them. And that's, that's great. Um, we've got these guides here about writing SMART goals, the kind of things you need to think about when you're coming up with your goals and your objectives. Um, something specific that you're gonna do, something that you can measure. Um, SMART is the acronym, Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Timeframed. Um, is it attainable? Don't go crazy. Don't say we're going to bring every single little kid into the library and all the toddlers will be here all at once. That would, you know, be crazy. <laughs> um, something it's actually you can do. Um, relevant is a um, pretty easy one. As long as you've done that previous work leading up to this, of your gathering your demographics and your community needs and doing your SWOT analysis, uh, it should be whatever you come up with be relevant. And specific time frame, put down dates. On In this year, we're gonna do it and the program's gonna be for this amount of time. This person's gonna be the person in charge of it. Um, that kind of thing in there. So be specific um, as you can there. Um, and then the last part of your um, uh, what you need here in your plan is an evaluation, a plan for evaluating it. That every once a year, um, you know, who's going to look at it? Uh, generally, this is the kind of thing I've seen in most of them, and, and it works perfectly, is the library board will, with the library director, look at this plan we've put together once a year in their, you know, January meeting or whenever uh, to make sure things are still on track um, and adjust as necessary. And that's fine. They can be... Um, Adjust it as you go. If you realize, wait, this project's not going to work as we laid it out in 2019, when 2021 comes around, that's fine. You can tweak things then. This isn't anything put in stone and you have to do it. It's not like you've applied for a grant and you have to report back to me and if you did it differently, you're you're, you're in trouble. No, um, this is just trying to come up with what's going on in our community. What are some things we can respond to? Uh, some people have had trouble with figuring out what can we do about these things. You know, all the stuff going on in town, <clears throat> excuse me, isn't anything that the library can do. We can't fix the roads. We can't um, clean up, you know, do certain things. But there are things that you can think outside the box. Um, sometimes some of these plans is just we know there's a problem with housing and people need to talk about it. We will, because we are a local gathering place and a um, neutral space too. It's not at the town hall or at some business who maybe has a vested interest in anything. Uh, people can come here, we will facilitate and host a meeting of the community and um, an open house, a town hall, to talk about the housing problems, that there's not enough, there's too many empty houses, whatever it is. And you just host the event. That is something the library can do, just reaching out and being that heart of the community and the place that people can do this at. Um, if there is something like the dog park needs cleaning up, you could, if you have a team group, they might say, let's do this as a community service and, and do it through the library as the being the one facilitated. Just think kind of creatively and outside the box. 
I highly recommend reading some of these examples, plans that we have here. Um, lots of these libraries have done some very different things in each of their locations that you might get some ideas about for your library. And it's okay to borrow, totally. <laughs> um, we, you know, libraries are all about sharing and borrowing and, and doing things, you know, for each other. So um, check out and see what they have done at some of their libraries if you're having trouble coming up with an idea. Uh, but when you're looking at what's going on in your town, the community's needs, and the profile, when you look at that demographic data, there's some things are going to kind of pop out at you, and there's going to be a light bulb moment that you'll see this thing, here's something I can do about it. Um, as far as these goals, these final things, usually have three of those, three different things that you're going to do over the next three-year period. Something else people have asked, uh, what if we had one we did previously in our previous plan, and we're still doing it? or it didn't work out and want to try again. Um, so can we reuse and do the same goal, the same project that we did before? Absolutely, um, that's perfectly fine. Just explain in your plan what happened, that this is actually an ongoing thing and we want to keep going with it and we want to keep it on this plan so we keep you know, thinking about it this way as a response to the community. Or it didn't work out and it was a failure, so we've revamped it and we're going to redesign it. Or things happened, life happened as we all have been experiences, we were flooded and we couldn't do the thing that we said we would do, this particular goal. We're gonna try again in the next three year period and hopefully we won't have more devastation in our communities. So that's perfectly fine that you reuse things in there. Don't think you have to come up with three brand new things um, on your plan. If there are certain older things that work for it, that is perfectly fine. So once you have all that together and written into a document, you then, would, as I said, you submit that to me. I will then use it in conjunction, look at it in conjunction with your accreditation application form. Oops, there we go. That you submit to me um, online, and then I evaluate them together. Now, as I said, let's get back here. The both of these items are due October 1st to me. So next Monday, the, I mean, you can be working already on your community needs response plan, your document, of course. Um, next Monday, the application form online goes, on, goes live. And October 1st is the deadline to get them to me. Uh, you don't have to do them at the same time. You can do the application form right away and then send me in the plan later or the other way around, whatever. But both to me by October 1st. Uh, as soon as I have both, I'll start evaluating yours and get back to you as soon as I can. If you have any issues and you need an extension or something's going on, let me know. These, this, this program, though, this accreditation program, there is no, um, as I said the, said at the beginning, there are some states that do um, accreditation and certification programs, but some do not. There is no national um, program about this. There is no one like from ALA or IMLS who is dictating to us, here's what you need to do. This is just done by each state and here in Nebraska, specifically me and my department, library development. So um, if you can't make that October 1st deadline and you know, reach out to me and let me know what your problems are if you're having issues. We can give extensions. I've done that before. If you need to do it in November or December or something, that's fine. Um, if there's major issues, uh, I previously have for libraries who have been doing major renovation or building projects and they got plenty on their plate, I can give you a year extension even and say, you know what, if 2019 doesn't work for you, let's, put, let's bump you a year. We extend your current accreditation to 2020 and that's then you'll come up next year for renewal. Um, with all the flooding and things we did have just recently, um, I'm not sure where libraries will be. We're kind of, I know we are past some of that. I do know that some areas are still having problems and issues and recovering. Uh, so let me know if you are in a situation that you don't think you'll be able to make it by October 1st, just talk to me, let me know. Don't just let it fall um, because if you just don't submit anything to me and I don't hear from you at all, by December 3rd, December 31st, um, you'll just be, you lose your accreditation, which means next year you would not get your state aid, you'd not be able to apply for the grants I mentioned, you would be, you would miss a year's worth. But if you reach out to me, we can do, we can work with, I can work with you on all of this. Um, I want you guys to be successful, I want you to be able to get through this and um, um, come up with, you know, feel proud and do what you're doing and um, hopefully use this plan that you're coming up with to uh, 
you know, do some good things in your library and in your community. Um, so any questions or comments you have? Um, we're a little after 11 o'clock, but that's okay. We started a little after 10, too. So I was doing some setup. So um, we do have a question that I just saw come in here. It says, um, our accreditation is due January 2020. Do we need to complete the strategic plan back to her this year? Now, if your accreditation is up for 2020, you you don't um, you you you'll just have to do that in 2020. Um, let's see, so is your let's see what your library is at here. <laughs> I don't want to go too fast. There we go. Okay, so accreditation is actually due, it expires. You may have a certification form that says, accreditation form that says expires as of September 30th of whatever year it is. That was the previous expiration, um, and then forms are due October 1st, and then it got a little confusing with libraries saying, well, if we, if our accreditation expired and we submitted in October, are we then unaccredited for a month or two while you're working on this? And I found that confusing. Um, for me, so we've changed, accreditation expires the end of whatever year it says it is, so December of the year. So your library's accreditation is actually good through the end of 2020, so next year. Um, if you have a plan that um, has got different dates on it, like if, you're, if you mean your plan is, is only dated through January of 2020, that's okay. When I reach out to you next July, that's when you'll have to start working on getting a plan in place that will be good for the upcoming time. So there, it's, if that's what you're talking about, I'm not sure what January date you're talking about. But you don't need to do anything until it's the year that you're up for renewal, reaccreditation. Oh, your board is due in January. Okay, then you will want to make sure you, if your board is due to be um, in January, then you would definitely want them accredited by their date. Yes, so that when I come to you in July, they're already on um, um, certified. Um, if your board has lapsed, when I come to you in the July of a year, there's going to have to be a discussion about how do we get them um, recertified quickly and if that's possible or not, because that, that is a requirement. Same thing with the director being certified as well. If they have lapsed or are struggling, we're gonna have to work on a plan of what you will do to show that you are working on it or you will have it done by October, whatever needs to be done. So yeah, your board is due in um, January, then you should be looking at what they've done. Um, let's see. Sorry for the quick scrolling here. Yes, January 2020. And if we look, if we click on your library's name, we can see all right, they've done some. Uh, a couple of things have um, just recently been done. That's great. Um, so by next January, which is the January 9th, they need to do 18 more credits. So get all that done by January, and then your board's good for the sort of the year accreditation that will come up next year. Uh, the plan, that document is a whole, so there's, there's like multiple things going on at different times. <laughs> it can get a little confusing, I guess. Um, but your board certification, just get it done by its date. Your own librarian certification, get it done by whatever its date is. And then your plan and your accreditation application form, those both just need to be um, up to date and done to me by October of whatever year you're up for renewal, the library is. Does that make sense, I hope, no? All right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Any other questions? Um, anything more you wanted to know about everything here? Uh, go ahead and type into the question section. I um, have gone through the basics of what accreditation is, why you'd want to be accredited, uh, what you need to do, the requirements for it. Um, demo the application form for you so you can see that. Um, talked a little about the accreditation, the community's response plan that you'll be working on. So that's all the basics of accreditation. Uh, if uh, you are up this year in 2019, look for my email next Monday, coming to your library. Monday, maybe Tuesday. <laughs> 
uh, if you're in a future year, as the, the questioner said, um, that'll be, you know, you'll be getting that next year. All right. If you don't have any other questions about this, then I think that will wrap it up for today's Encompass Live. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, today, if you do have any questions about your accreditation, um, whether, you're, whether you're due now or in the future, let me know. Um, if you want to send me your plan, that community needs plan, actually, as well, um, I can look at drafts for you. You don't have to wait and send me just the final version. If you have a partially written one or parts of it you want me to, to give you some feedback on, we can do that back and forth. Um, that is actually what will happen after, whenever you submit things to me, whether it's whenever you do it or October 1st, we will have a back and forth. I, if I need to ask you more questions or uh, clarify something in your plan, or if I see you mention something in your in your application form but didn't mention it in your plan or vice versa, I will come back to you and say, hey, you might want to update this here, or you might want to fix this in your plan, or you've got to add this instead. Uh, so there will be a back and forth. This isn't just as you submit to me and then and you know you never get a chance to work on anything. All of these things are still able to are, are flexible. Um, as I said about the form, nothing's in stone once you submit it. It's just here's what we've got. I'll look at it and see if I think anything needs to be adjusted or updated or tweaked until we have a final version that gets you um, your good accreditation at the end. And ideally, by the end of December is when everyone will have heard um, back and we have everything wrapped up by the end of the year for everybody. So if you are working on anything now, let me know. Contact me. Um, you'll get your emails next week. All right. So that will wrap it up for today's Encompass Live. Um, the show is being recorded and will be here on our Encompass Live website. Right here is where our archives go. Uh, we have our most recent ones will be at the top of the list. So today's will be up here probably uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, we will have um, the recording will be posted. We upload it to the Library Commission's YouTube channel. And then um, it is linked from here. Here's where we have the last um, weeks. If we had any documents or presentations or slides, we link to those as well. I don't have one of those, anything for that, that for this week. Um, also, this is our archives. I'll show you this while we're here. We do have a search feature here. Uh, this is the 11th year, 2019 is the 11th year of Encompass Live. So we have a lot of archives here. So we do have a search feature. Now you can search the full archives for anything you want to, or just most recent 12 months if you want something just current, just very recent. So do keep that in mind when you are searching and looking at our archives. Everything has a date of when it was originally broadcast. So um, please, you know, double, you know, pay attention to when it was um, originally done when you're watching something. There may be old information in here. They may be outdated. Services or programs or products might not exist anymore or might have completely changed. Um, but we are um, librarians and um, archivists, some of us here, and this is what we do. We save things for um, history. So the, all this will always be there for you. Um, and you can use this search feature to find whatever you want. Let's get back to our main page here. There we go. All right. Uh, so um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page here for the show where we post um, when shows are starting, new shows coming up, when recordings are available. Um, so if you are a big on using Facebook, do give us a like over there and you'll get notified of things there. We also do post to the through, via the Library Commission's Twitter account. We have on our home page a blog where we post about the show. Here's the one reminding about this week's show. So lots of different ways to hear about what's going on on Encompass Live. But if you do use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, and I hope you join us next week when our topic is uh, Pretty Sweet Tech, Enhance Your Online Security with Password Management Tools. Uh, Pretty Sweet Tech is a new monthly feature on Encompass Live where our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, will be um, doing something techie related every month. Uh, and you can see it in our schedule here. Um, this is uh, the July. August is August 14th, and each we've got it booked for each month throughout the year. Ultimately, it'll be the last Wednesday of the month will be Pretty Sweet Tech. These first couple months of starting out with it, um, it, it bounces around because we have other things scheduled. Um, but if you want to definitely you know, know what she's got going on, um, look for um, these shows. And next week, she's going to be talking about password management tools, um, why you want to be secure with your your passwords that you create and ways that you can keep track of all of these tons and tons of different passwords that we have out there. 
So definitely sign up for that one or any of our other shows. We've got all of July and August um, fully booked here. And as we get the September dates filled in, we'll start adding those on as well. So please do uh, sign up for any of our upcoming Encompass Live shows. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you everyone for attending. Uh, look for my emails for accreditation. We'll get you all um, accredited for this year. Um, and hopefully we'll see you uh, in the future on Encompass Live. Thanks. Bye-bye.